Aluminum is a silvery gray metal. It's light resistant to corrosion and very strong, which have led it to be used for things like utensils, engineering parts, and aircraft construction. Have you ever wondered how aluminum is made before it's transformed into cans, cars, and baseball bats? In this video, we will guide you through each step of aluminum production and give you a better understanding of one of the world's most used materials. Aluminum rarely is found in its pure form in nature. Instead, aluminum production is a complex process in which raw material is transformed into a strong, usable metal through the usage of electrolysis and redox. This is called the Bayer process and is the most commonly used method. Aluminum starts out as bauxite, a clay-like soil that is a mixture of aluminum oxide, iron oxide, and silicon oxide. The bauxite is mined and transported to plants where it is crushed and washed to remove impurities. Here's when things start to get on a chemical level. Of course, we need to keep the aluminum part and get rid of everything else. This is achieved by washing the bauxite with hot sodium hydroxide at a temperature of 175 degrees Celsius. The aluminum oxide reacts with the sodium hydroxide and is converted into soluble sodium aluminate. Because the other compounds remain insoluble, they can be filtered out as solid impurities. The sodium aluminate crystallizes into solid aluminum hydroxide. Finally, the aluminum hydroxide is heated at 980 degrees Celsius and decomposes to aluminum oxide, giving off water vapor in the process. Now we have aluminum oxide, but how is that made into pure aluminum? The answer is by using oxidation reduction reactions. The alumina, which is another term for aluminum oxide, is poured into reduction cells. Each reduction cell is a bat 4 meters wide and 10 meters long, shaped like a shallow bat. The cell holds two electrodes, which are rods that allow electricity to flow through the alumina. One is a negative cathode, and the other is a positive anode. An electric current is used to maintain the pot at an operating temperature of nearly 1,000 degrees Celsius. How does this reduction cell work? It can be explained by this equation. This is a redox equation. To begin with, the overall charge of aluminum oxide must be zero. So before the reaction, the oxidation number for aluminum is plus three and the charge for oxygen is minus two. During the reaction, the aluminum ions are reduced to pure aluminum. The freely moving ions gain electrons from the negative cathode and their oxidation state changes from plus three to zero. Aluminum gains electrons, meaning that it has undergone a reduction. Meanwhile, the oxide ions are oxidized to produce molecular oxygen. The negatively charged oxygen ions lose electrons to the positive anode, and their oxidation state changes from minus 2 to 0. Oxygen loses electrons, meaning it has undergone oxidation. The resulting oxygen gas can be filtered off as a waste product. So at the end of this process, we are left with pure, dense liquid aluminum that sinks to the bottom of the vat where it can be drained away periodically. The aluminum can be cast into any item now, or made into an alloy, and there you have it. This is how aluminum is made. Now you know the process, but what about the environmental impacts of reduction? Here are the pros and cons. The eco-friendly side of aluminum is that it can be remelted and reused an infinite amount of times. Recycling the aluminum requires only 5% of the energy needed to make the primary aluminum. Recycling just 96 cans saves enough energy to keep a laptop computer running for over a month. But that certainly isn't saying aluminum production is good for the environment. The Bayer process is incredibly energy intensive, requiring copious amounts of electricity, water, and resources to produce. Entire power plants are built solely to support the aluminum industry. Half of this melting energy comes from coal, which is notorious for polluting the atmosphere with smog. Also, the strip mining process of bauxite is detrimental to the environment. 130 million tons of bauxite is mined annually, and the strip mining process removes all native vegetation in the mining region, resulting in a loss of habitat and food for local wildlife as well as soil erosion. So that brings our presentation to an end. We hope you enjoyed our video. This has been Aluminum Production by Catherine Gong and Winnie Sun.